They played better, but no one's perfect. And they were perfect in the first two games. And for the Houston Rockets, some hope. They lead 62 to 59. Brent Musburger coming up at the half. Live from Houston, CBS Sports coverage of the 1986 Finals is sponsored by Chrysler Plymouth. We're making Made in America mean something again. And by AT&T. In long-distance services, information and network systems, telephones and computers, AT&T is the right choice. Well, here at the half, a game the Rockets have to have, and they're up on the Celtics by three points, 62 to 59. Now, of course, there is another story unfolding in sports. The Kemper into the sixth sudden death hole. Greg Norman and Larry Mize are dueling away. We're going to keep you up to date with Pat Summerall. But first, we want to go back in history in the NBA. The big men, the key to any victory. And, of course, the greatest winner of all time was Bill Russell. Eleven titles in 13 years. Wilt Chamberlain, the great individual skills of the still. And then along came Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And he broke Chamberlain's all-time scoring record. But they all followed the first man, number 99, out at DePaul and later with the Minneapolis Lakers, big George Mikan with that sweeping hook shot. And what a pleasure it is to have George with us. George, if you had your choice of any of the big men to win one game in their prime, which one of those fellows would you choose? Boy, you ask great questions. I'd, I'd have to go with uh, uh, Jabbar. Kareem, I think he does it all. He's uh, a very uh, astute player. He's on top of his game, and he makes things happen. When he has the ball, you better look out. George, are you at all envious of the great amounts of money? Were you born at the wrong time as a big man? Well, I was in the covered wagon days. Uh, the, the type of money they paid me, they used for tips today. <laughs> How much were you paid? What was your bonus when you signed? There was no bonus, uh, Brent. Uh, they didn't even know the word. Uh, my opening contract was for 12000 bucks. Did you have to fight for that? Yes, uh, I held out for, for a month to get $12,000. Can you beat that? No, George, I want to take a look at your style. We've got on videotape. Describe yourself to me as a center back in those days with the Lakers. Okay, well, I was a uh, power center. I like to uh, find my man in position. I'd back in, take a big step and hook uh, to the side I was on the basket. And uh, our style of play was that uh, we would use the cutters. Well, there's the old sky hook that we used many years ago uh, on a run. <laughs> George, the 24-second clock, we all take it for granted in the NBA. You're responsible. Tell me that story. Well, we played against Fort Wayne many years ago, and uh, the game ended up 19 to 18. They just would not score. They would just sit on the ball. And the thing burned in my memory was that on the shot uh, just prior to the end of the game, Larry Faust went in on a hook shot. I tipped it in for Larry Faust. I made two points for Fort Wayne, and they won 19-18. Dan, of course, you were also responsible for the change in the goaltending rules and several others. But, George, you were one time a commissioner of the ABA. This is a shot from that time. Look at that dark hair you had then. But <laughs> Minneapolis is after an expansion franchise in the NBA. Now, the Lakers moved out to Los Angeles. Will that city now support a professional basketball team? I believe so, because we ran three exhibition games in the last three years and drew over 15000 at each game at top prices. We have three places to play that we never had when I was playing. We have the Met Center, we have the Metrodome, and we have the St. Paul Civic Center. All that seat 18000 or better. And indicative of the uh, fan support in Minnesota, we had the NC2A quarterfinals there and sold out uh, every night. So it should be a great city for the NBA, in your opinion. I believe so. George, thanks for being with us this afternoon. Two stories coming up from the Kemper Open, and Pat O'Brien will look at Robert Reed of the Rockets. How do you think? For Larry Mize, and congratulations to Greg Norman. He was 0-3 in playoffs. Hey, now he's 1-1. One -one. It took a while. <laughs> Larry Mize twice in the water. The six hole of sudden death. Greg Norman. Hard to hold. No, he's in the water. He win the $90,000 first round. All I had to do was make four. Hey. How's the second one feel, Greg? And a great white shark. Hmm? That's the second Finally episode. gotten done. Oh, they all feel good. Now, now let's go back to basketball and Dick Stock. Sure. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. Thanks, Steve. Right, Pat, thank you. Greg Norman, the great white shark from Australia, and he's been a bridesmaid several times. He also happened to be a visitor in game one of the Boston Garden. And George Mikan, what were your thoughts about this first half? I thought it was like a fight with the Rockets hitting the Celtics with their best shot. 
Well, you know something? It's been very tenacious out there. The defense has been real strong. In the opening part of the game, uh, Boston committed a lot of errors because of the pressing defense that Houston uh, uh, put on them. But, you know, as the game progressed, that Boston is something. They just keep picking away, waiting their time. And they got that one ingredient called Larry Bird. He's fantastic. Uh, the work he does on the defensive board is something to behold for his size against the Twin Towers out there. Uh, I, I just uh, am amazed at the great job he can do. And then Walton came in for uh, Boston, played very well for him, made six strategic points, uh, gave him a lot of stability when they needed it, and uh, as a result, they're in the ball game. Uh, the second half, uh, we're going to need some more shooting from the outside by Houston so they can <coughs> keep the pressure off of Elijah Wan and Big Sampson. Elijah Wan had a uh, rather tough first half because he was triple teamed and all those things, but the guards uh, did a fantastic job for him to keep him in the ball game. Uh, quickly pick a winner for me, Houston or Boston? Oh, you stinker. <laughs> uh, I don't want to do that. Yeah, you see, you never would go out on a limb. Thank well, you, I Jeff. would, but I uh, <laughs> I would like to see Houston win. No, I, yeah, that's but... because his son played for Bill Fitch, folks. I know that. Okay. We're going to come back with the second half. It's going to be Dick Stockton and Tommy Heinsohn. The Boston Celtics lead the Rockets two games to none, but the Rockets lead here by three points, and we'll continue. 1986 NBA Finals. Despite the fact that they have played a much better game, they find that their lead is only three over the Boston Celtics. What's surprising there, field goal percentage is Boston's 43. Parrish, Ainge, and Johnson are 7 of 24 for the Celtics. Let's move along to the free throws where the Rockets have finally found a way to go to the line, and they did more than the Celtics did in the first half. Backcourt has been a problem for the Houston Rockets in relation to the Celtics in the scoring department. But in the first half, the Rocket backcourt outscored the Celtic guards 29-19. Tommy Heinz, I want to ask you two things. Number one, the foul trouble we have here. And two, I'm going to ask you about the third period, which has been the key to Boston's victory so far. Well, I think the foul trouble here, obviously, uh, with three on Akeem, it's going to interrupt their low post game. But they were going to Samson more anyway, and Samson's really been playing a fantastic game. Uh, Elijah Wan only had one rebound in that first half and no offensive rebounds. So they've got to get him more involved. I'll tell you this, the third quarter defense is most important. That's where the Celtics have come to the fore. They've used uh, the same look offense to try and then jump on, jump, jump on it defensively and take the game away. But the Rockets have run so effectively here in the uh, first half, I don't know if they can do it. You can see how the Celtics have dominated Houston in the third period of these games and 